Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Waiting for Everton to appoint a manager is a bit like waiting for the lads off Geordie Shore to catch polio. Alright, bit harsh, but anything to get that shit off my TV. Actually, I don't even have a TV, I live in a cupboard. The point though is that the Everton board took their goddamn time with this appointment. And the more it dragged on, the less confident Everton fans should have been that they were going to get it right. Once you start seeing links to Diego Simeone and then Sam Allardyce in the same week, Christ, it's like watching a toddler eat a petty faloo with a steak knife. You know it's not going to end well, and certainly the outcome is Allardyce, I would definitely liken that to a bloody mess. Being forced to watch Allardyce's brand of football, I would rather be forced fed seven seasons of the Big Bang Theory clockwork orange style. God, I hate that f***ing show. Then again, we've already clarified I don't, I don't have a television. Alright, I stand outside in the cold and watch it through my neighbour's window. Are you happy? Five managers have lost their jobs this season, but at least those clubs have acted. They haven't sat on their hands and watched the assistant boss lurch to a number of defeats in between mouthfuls of jammy donuts. Slavin Village was given the boot at West Ham. 24 hours later they had a replacement, <laughs> I didn't say it was a great replacement, but it was somebody who was a, was a human being. Leaving David Unsworth in charge of your team is a bit like leaving your frozen steak out in the sun for three weeks. They've just been rotting away, their confidence completely eroding with every pummeling. There's no organisation, no leadership, this is not how you run a football club. It's like Unsworth was being given an audition, on the job. Well, if this was an audition, the man has essentially forgotten his lines, broken the set, and backed over the director's dog on his way out. But here's the thing. He didn't deserve to be hung out to dry like this. He has as much top flight experience as his postman. Well, I assume he does. I'm not entirely sure what Paul Jules is getting up to these days. But suddenly, Unsworth's reputation is in absolute tatters. This is a man who actually had aspirations to become a football manager. <laughs> not gonna happen now. So who's to blame for this absolute mess? The owner, Fayed Mashiri, said he was pleased with the transfer window. Was he high on bath salts? If you lose your top scorer, common sense should prevail that you need to go out and actually sign a centre forward. Somebody that can score a few goals. Not Rooney, the lad who looks like he'd kill his granny for the last Big Mac. I won't tell you what he'd do to everybody else's granny. Romelu Lukaku couldn't escape Merseyside quick enough, but at least the club did have 75 million pounds to play around with. They chucked most of that at a lad who nearly got relegated last season. David Klassen was also signed off the back of a great season with Ajax. He looks like he'd be more useful working down the local bowling alley. Cuckoo Martina arrived from Southampton, I can only assume Ronald Coleman lost a bet. Because his defending looks straight out of a horror movie. Jordan Pickford came in, England's future number one, who in the last year has been shot at more times than a Navy SEAL. Michael Keane left Burnley to advance his World Cup ambitions. The £25 million man looks so shot of confidence that you could grab someone from the crowd. Hand them a pair of football boots and they'd probably do a better job of clearing the f***ing ball. And of course Rooney returned home, mumbled through his press conference about winning things before going off to get arrested for drunk driving. They were supposed to get in Olivier Giroud, Diego Costa, I mean, who's gonna want to play for Big Sam? Connor Wickham? It looked like it was gonna be Sean Dyche, the man who sounds like he's had a turn up stuck in his throat for about five years. Yeah, the man does have a relegation on his CV, when Daddy Ings is your best player, is it any surprise? And he was sacked by Watford, then again, who wasn't? But he's also turned Burnley into a solid mid-table team, and actually encourages Hendrick and Brady to pass the ball. Martin, I hope you're taking notes, and has been able to convince Stephen Ward not to shit himself whenever he gets the ball in his own box. I still wake up at night with Denmark flashbacks. For some reason, the speculation seems to have died down. So next in line for the job was Marco Silva, a man who one year ago nobody had ever heard of apart from maybe his wife. He's doing a great job of Watford, but he's literally been there for five minutes. The toffees are like that annoying kid at preschool who only wants the shiny toy when someone else starts playing with it. I'm not saying this would happen to Silva, but there were other young bosses tipped for big things. Phil Brown, the man who single-handedly kept Northeast telling salons and business for the last 20 years, once thought he was going to manage England. He's now coaching and Anton Ferdinand, Mark Antoine Fortune, and lads who get their names tattooed on their head. Other names were thrown into the mix, like Andres Villas Boas, the fourth best paid manager in the world. Seriously. Ralph Reinick, who signed a contract 20 minutes after the speculation. Wolves boss Nuno Espirito Santo turned them down. Paolo Fonseca has also been linked to the club. Diego Simeone emerged as a contender last week. Joey Barton would have had a better chance of being Pope. He'd probably take one look at Ashley Williams and have a heart attack. Who wants to manage Antoine Griezmann when there's Dominic Calvert Lewin? Even Martin O'Neill came into the mix. Diego Diego Simeone and Martin O'Neill on the same wish list. That's like trying to chat up Margot Robbie and Susan Boyle on the same night. And so, just when you thought the queues at the Goodison Park hot dog stands weren't long enough, Sam Allardyce is coming to town. I would imagine this is the part where Everton fans start pulling their eyes from their head. It's not like they'll be wanting them. The football this man plays, is it even football? They signed about six number 10s in the summer. He, didn't, he, doesn't, he hasn't used the number 10 since JJ Okacha. Allardyce is the firefighter of the Premier League. Comes in, signs a few big lumps, grinds out some decent results and keeps the club up. 
Is this what Everton have come to? He's basically Tony Pulis if Tony Pulis devoured his wife and children. This is not Sunderland, it's not Crystal Palace. This is Everton, a club who spent a huge amount of money in the summer. There should only ever have been a race between Unsworth and Allardyce for the last steak and kidney pie at Grace, not for the manager's job at Everton Football Club. Man, now let's get real. I mean, Allardyce is a good boss, he was the England manager. I mean, sure, I've had haircuts that have lasted longer. Three hours for this, maybe I should stop paying homeless drunks to cut it. Allardyce is the man who comes in as a pair of stabilizers, keeps the club afloat, but once the club becomes so accustomed to his god-awful brand of football, once he leaves, it all goes to sh**. Remember back in September 2010, when he said he shouldn't be managing Blackburn, but... Real Madrid. I remember when I read that over somebody's shoulder at a bus stop. I couldn't afford newspapers. I spat out my morning potatoes in disgust. I've ruined the guy's jacket. The bottom line is, Allardyce is a man with a massive ego and thinks he's too big for whatever club he ends up at. No matter how good he is though, there's always a ceiling with him. This was supposed to be a new chapter for Everton, but Jesus. So best of luck with Sam Allardyce, lads. He'll keep you up, but you spend 45 million pounds on one player, Relegation shouldn't even be in your thoughts. In terms of qualifying for the Champions League in the near future, never in a million years with him. Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. What do you think? Is he a good appointment for Everton? You know my thoughts. Plus, I want to hear yours. Anyway, if you agree, hit the like button. If you don't, tell me I'm a But the main thing, cheers for watching, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.